USA. Once again, our website is kpalawyers.ca and our phone number is 905-965-6263. Rob Mike Richards, weekdays on News Talk Saga 960. And now, from the Bell Lifestyle Studio, here's Mike. It is 711 News Talk Saga 960 Raw, Mike Richards. And my good friend, Paul Romanek. Romy is uh, joining us once again here early on a Thursday. Love it, buddy. Thanks so much for joining me this morning. Look forward to it all week. Hey, nice uh, nice way to start the day for me as well. A little cup of coffee and, uh, and uh, you know, end of the day we go. So uh, thanks for uh, asking me to come on again. Now, as a coffee man, uh, what, uh, now, so I've got a, I got a dark roast going here today. And, and sometimes that is just my favorite thing. And it's, it's like rocket fuel, it really bags a punch, <laughs> but I do like, as a coffee man, what, what are you? I, I don't, cause it's been so long since we've done this at this time. I can't remember what kind of coffee or, or if you're, cause you are a coffee drinker. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, is there anybody in broadcasting who isn't? Bastel. Oh, it really? No, no, no. He, 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 if he had anything, it would be a tea, but he never, ever, ever had a coffee. And he's the only guy I've ever met who was like that. Yeah, well, that's why he's out of the business now. Yeah. No coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Line two, Bastel. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, uh, as, as Mike does his old bits for Paul. Uh, <laughs> it, um, no, I'm, I'm a, uh, what you, I don't even think it's a fancy coffee. I'm like, a, it's an Italian roast. Uh, I, I have like a coffee thing upstairs, um, you know, like an espresso, espresso machine. And yeah. uh, there we go. I just, uh, you know, and I think back in the, day when you and i were together it was good old whatever the the bad drip coffee of the day was oh. either from the the chum uh, uh cafeteria or i believe there was a lovely lady named nancy who would sometimes nip out and grab us uh, grab us coffees and stuff so whatever yeah, well, it was in, in, in when uh we ended up going to so so the team 1050 so it's it's the old Ch chum uh building but but it had been renovated and there was another story to it like since the days that i was always there it was it that was sort of a brand new uh even, this, even well in fact the control room was still being built when we were talking like remember geats i'd be sitting there talking and then geats head would be between my legs i'm like what what are you doing what's going on <laughs> oh no i just you know they saw the screwdrivers like they 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 were still building that thing as as we were speaking and in their coffee they coffee room or or, or in the cafeteria they had one of those machines that also made like a a latte was supposed to be oh, some sort of Oh, that's fancy right. Yes, thing. yes, yes, yes. Fancy. But it was, yeah. but it was one of those things that for Italians would be death because it was, it was all made with those magic powders <laughs> in the pouch. You know, just yeah, the like, the way Mama used to make it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. out of a, a foil package, and and, and, and and you'd have to enter some kind of a you know some kind of a sequence on a keyboard to get the yes. coffee. You was yeah. like you were, you were launching Apollo, you know, trying to. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I can remember screwing that up occasionally. The funniest thing I remember about that was uh, our old friend uh, Doug Kirkwood, who was a big part of that show uh, after the the nine eleven attack. Um, the next day we went up and when the, uh, the little container inside this automatic coffee machine, when it got full of, of, uh, old containers, like old coffee pods, a, a light would flash that said, check bin as in, you know, check the bin. Oh yeah. And, yes. And, and so we went up and check bin was flashing and yeah. Doug goes, look, even the coffee machine's on high alert for terrorists. <laughs> oh yeah. It's like the things you say a day later. Now I I've told this story uh, on air probably a, a couple of times, certainly in Calgary I did, but the morning of nine 11 was one that will always really in some ways, emotionally, uh, even in reflection in our memories, will always be tied to, to you, at least for me, to you. Yeah. 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 We, well, we were, you've told the story. I have too, uh, in, in writing, uh, not so much on the air cause I haven't been doing a radio show, but, uh, yeah, we were doing our morning show and, uh, I think we all have slightly different recollections and I, I've actually gone back, Mike, to the, you know, you can go quite easily onto Wikipedia or wherever and see the actual timeline of what happened mm -hmm. when the first plane hit, when the second one hit, and so on. And I have a distinct memory of the first one hitting and the second one hitting. See, in my mind, it was right around the time we were about to go off the air. And I remember 
doing a quick wrap up and saying something along the lines of, you know, get yourself to a television set. A plane is crashed into the World Trade Center. I'm not kidding. Um, Because, you know, we did a lot of joking around and I just wanted people. This is not a bit. uh, Get yourself to a TV set. This is this has happened. Um, And it but it not because I think, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but initially you and I were both as I think everyone was. It was some moron in a like a little piper cub or something has crashed into the world and we didn't realize that it was a jet and then when the second one hit you realized you know holy cow there's you know this there's something really bad happening and we didn't know what at the time but that's my recollection of it what about you yeah well see that we were on national network and so when you had to get off it 855 or four or whatever that whenever we had to get out um so you were controlling it right so 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 just so people know so 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 Romy's the guy controlling everything it's 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 he leads first and and then I come second so he's got a you know direct traffic when the plane goes in to the first building we don't even know what kind of plane right we 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 are unaware of the 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 actual make and and plane that goes in and the first thing that comes to me because i'm uh, at that point like the 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 joke machine i'm in the joke factory and so two weeks beforehand that's there was a bunch of this stuff there was a bunch of weird plane antics that were going on in the planet including uh some guy who'd flown his own plane into like a uh to the into a small building in florida i think uh you know there was there's an air transat one where they took off from france but somehow forgot to check the fuel <laughs> which is a was a just a a a, a stunning uh report <laughs> and and a reflection upon you know air transat you know and we did a bit on that where you hear the plane as your captain speaking we're going to be flying at uh, you know forty five thousand feet hope you enjoy the uh the uh, scene we'll be going over the uh thing as i've done our checklist as i'm a professional pilot uh booze got that right boy and they got booze food fuel oh oh no oh it's my face red <laughs> no just gotta and and so we had a bunch of plane mishaps so here i am now i'm trying to get in as the music's up and we're going to break Romy is watching the television and describing sort of just sort of the the, the scene because we haven't seen the building we don't really quite know because we're getting to that time where we have to get out because everybody has to link up and go to their their local shows so we we got to get out and i'm trying to get a joke in and i look back on that and i think if romy hadn't have kind of blocked me <laughs> from doing a punchline i, I would have gone down and oh. i would have gone down in history as the worst human being ever who would have dropped who knows what i don't know what line i don't know what joke but there's always something that i'm thinking of as my rolodex goes on about this plane in the building going to make some crack about i don't know tawny katan or uh, who knows what would have come out of my mouth it would have been the worst thing ever but romy who's a, a pro and has done stuff at, at the at the biggest of, of network levels knows that we got to get out on time and because i can't get in <laughs> you kind of saved me that's See, my record you would have known but i'm trying to i'm trying to I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. you know as a, <laughs> and that would have been can you imagine the, the worst person in the world which that's funny again there's a uh if you're into this kind of thing douglas copeland uh or pardon me not douglas copeland um uh who's the tipping point guy uh guy wrote the tipping point anyways it'll come to me in a second but it's 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 a famous thing where people can be in the same place at the same time have the same experience and yet have completely different recollections of it which is why i one reason why eyewitness testimony can be so unreliable uh malcolm gladwell sorry that's the author i'm talking about but i have no recollection mike of that of me giving you the stop sign or consciously well, trying to, to yeah, keep you from jumping you in i was i just remember we're going to time it, you know as you said we have to get off and i was looking up at the monitor yes. and again in my mind which is probably wrong but it it dawned on me like seconds before we had to be off the air that holy cow this is this isn't this is something big and sinister and i said you know not often on radio you say turn your tv on but i said get yourself to a tv a plane has crashed into the world trade center there's something going on uh, bye for now we'll talk to you tomorrow and that's something like that. I don't have I don't have any recollection of you trying to jump in with a zinger. 
Well, you know, well, you wouldn't have because you were concentrated on what you had to do. And I only would have got in should that moment have happened at any given second. But because you were relaying probably the most important information of our lifetimes, there was no way that I was going to get in. And it's good. It's a good thing that I did. Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, who was flying that plane? Was it like it, it uh, you know, it and, and the and the thing that I always remember uh, as the seconds and I mean seconds. So we get off and we're kind of staring at each other because you can't believe what's happening because it's getting worse by the minute. Like every minute that goes by, the, the moment becomes heavier. And the realization of what's happening in New York starts to weigh as we find out more information. We're like, it was a, it was a, a like a, a jet with, with, with people on it. Like it was a, like yeah. a full. And then of course it starts to, and then you, and then when the second one goes in, uh, I'm a little bit of a mess because just that past week I had met someone at a party for a buddy. So my buddy, Adam Oldfield, as some people might know, um, he has sort of like a family relationship. You know, sometimes they call him family, but they're not really family. And so uh, Chris May, who you might see on the Weather Network, who's an awesome guy, um, it was his brother. And I'd met him and he told me the story about how he worked in New York at the World Trade Center. So when the second one goes in, I'm a mess. And you wouldn't have recollection of this because you saw me and I'm not, I'm not stoic very often. Like I'm not out of it very often. And you see me and you're like, Mikey, what's uh, going on? So I, I phone Adam to ask about, and I can't remember the, the, the brother's name at the time, Adam, or sorry, Chris May's brother. He, he had slept in that morning because he stayed late the night beforehand. So he wasn't there. He slept in because he was he worked the midnight oil the night beforehand at the World Train Center. Wow. And it saved his life. And then I I, I don't ball, but I'm I'm on that verge. Like you can see me going. And you come into the the bullpen or the green room or want to talk about it and put your arm around me and say it's it's okay, because that, that doesn't happen very often. And the circumstance is very volatile at this point. Like people are running all over the place. Now you have to remember Chum FM is also on the other side. Um, and so at that point in radio, they, there, there's a lot of people in this building and, and the sports format had update guys and yeah. the next shift. Is, there's a lot of people there. And all I remember is you comforted me in that moment. And I was surprised at my act reaction, but I guess in a lot of ways, that would have been the smallest of reactions as we find out and it gets worse and worse. And, uh, I didn't leave till much later, but I picked up my son. I picked up Jordan that day at school. That's how shaken i was like somehow the next target would have been you know whitby ontario or, what, or whatever my mind was thinking but i was getting my son that's all i know so yeah. i i went from toronto drove back and picked up jordan at school and how do you explain that to a child because i also had a friend in dallas because there are targets if you this thing about the united states there are certain things in certain cities that you don't maybe attribute on a national scale but some cities have something of value that might be targeted so I phoned him like you start doing things you don't think that you would do, but you do them because in that moment there is panic. Yeah. And, and to your earlier point that, you know, the way we, we got down this rabbit hole, uh, like same with you, Mike, we will, I will forever for the rest of my life uh, on, on that day, I will think about the fact that, you know, I was on the air with you doing a radio show when it happened. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a, uh, a unique place to be for uh, an infamous mo moment in history, for sure. Yeah, and uh, one that uh, we'll certainly never forget. And the, the, uh, the summer is the first time I've seen Ground Zero, and it's a very uh, overwhelming experience if uh, if you get a chance to do it. And it was kind of roped off for COVID protocols and that kind of so on, so you couldn't actually see the water and the things that people lean over. But um, yeah, we, we're tied by that. We're, we're, we're tied by that. And uh, it's something that we will uh, never, obviously, even personally, uh, forget because of that moment. Now, we're going to come back on the other side. So uh, Romy's in a, a studio uh, or the virtual studio all hour long. And there's lots to talk about, including maybe some international hockey. We do have a Team Canada. There is going to be Olympics, which to me, why are we, why are we even doing this? I have no idea. We'll come back on the other side. Uh, first, it's traffic on the fives, as we always do it. And at 725, here's Brendan.
No radio? No problem. Stream us live on Saga960AM.ca. You're listening to Raw Mike Richards on News Talk Saga 960. Attention minor hockey teams. The Mississauga Steelheads want to give you the experience of a lifetime. Raise money for your team. Skate on the ice as the Steelheads play in front of thousands of fans. Or have Steelheads players at your practice. To get your team involved, head to MississaugaSteelheads.com or give us a call at area code 905-502-7788. Are you looking for a way to make a difference in your business? Check out your local Board of Trade or Chamber of Commerce. These community-based business organizations are positioned to help your business in many ways. They are the voice of business that advocate for you every day at all levels of government. They give you access to business associates, government officials, and a host of programs designed to boost your bottom line. For more information, call the Mississauga Board of Trade at 905-273-6151 or visit online at www.mbot.com. Imagine having over 100 TV multi-language channels at your fingertips. Imagine having over 100 multi-language radio stations at your fingertips. Now, imagine an app that lets you watch or listen to all of this amazing entertainment whenever or wherever you want. Now, imagine it's all free. eBaba is the reality in mobile entertainment. Download eBaba for iOS or Android. Turn imagination into reality at Ibaba. The Punjabi Community Health Services PCHS Lunger on Wheels is a program aimed at providing food to frail homebound seniors who are unable to prepare meals for themselves. Each day we deliver fresh, hot, and nutritious meals that are familiar and comforting to a wide range of ethnicities according to the dietary needs of each person. Since 2016, PCHS has delivered nearly 200,000 meals to an average of 80 seniors per month. Too many seniors are stuck at home and out of sight. They are vulnerable to illness, weakness, and medical complications arising from hunger and poor nutrition. Now, more than ever, We need your help to expand our Longer on Wheels food delivery program. For more information and to donate, please go to our website, pchs.foundation. You can also send us an email at ceo at pchs.foundation. Our aim is a simple one, to ensure that no senior will go without food, ever. News Talk Saga 960 is the new home for Raw Mike Richards. Brought to you by Bell Lifestyle Products. Also streaming live on Saga960.ca. And now, from the Bell Lifestyle Studio, here's Mike. It is 7.30. News Talk Saga 960 Raw Mike Richards. Paul Romanuk, Romy in the virtual studio for the rest of the hour. We'll have a short break here, and then we'll come back at 7.40. That will be our longer break, so I... Would suggest that's what we'll talk about. Uh, you know, some of the Olympic stuff that we mentioned, some of the international hockey, uh, and you know, and talking about the Olympic and the thought of having Olympics and everything tied to that. We'll do that seven forty because we're going to need uh, some serious time, I think, when we talk about whatever the hell we're supposed to be doing there. But um, you know, uh, geez, the, I I think I know what you're going to your <laughs> angle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I don't know how it's not everyone's angle. I got to be honest. I just uh, to the, someone said, did you see the roster? I said, what, what roster? The, the, the men's team? What men's team? Hockey team. What the hell are you talking about? Like, it, it's so far away from my collective, considering what's going on in the planet, that it really is just hard to get my head around. Even there are times, I think, even, you know, when you look at schedules, and, and so, the, so the Ducks were in town last night, and, and Sam Carrick, Stovall native, you know, grew up with uh, his parents, in fact, and, and Sam's been on the show a couple of times. I mean, <laughs> It's just hard to get my head around the fact when I see what our world has gone through and, and what it means to kind of survive. And hopefully you don't lose your house or lose your restaurant or, or lose your gym or, you know, you go down the line. So we'll, we'll do that at 740. I, I do want to get back to something now for those uh, who missed your appearance uh, last week. And this is great. As I said to, to, uh, to Lumbee the other day, th- this should be a regular occurrence. I think if you've got the time to do this, because the response to it has been, I don't know if you saw some of the stuff, but, uh, you know, people miss hearing your voice. Uh, people miss your perspective because, uh, and I think probably as I wrote in the book that I did a bunch of years ago, I mean, I learned a lot from you, a lot from you. Now, I've been in business a long time, but that doesn't mean you know everything. It's, it, it's like a, a tennis player or a golfer who, you know, at the highest of level thinks they know everything while they'll be the first one to tell you that's why they have a coach. 
That's why they have somebody else there saying, you know what you could do. And that's what you did for me. That's what you did for me is uh, certainly in the area of listening to people in an interview and people that come on my show and have for years mentioned, yeah, they get the jokes, the impressions, but they really enjoy when we sit down and talk. And I have to be honest, a lot of that I got from you. Oh, well, it's very kind of you to say, but I've, that's uh, thank you. Thank you for that. It, uh, and I've, I learned a lot from, from you about uh, yeah, bad uh, things, uh, all the, how, to, <laughs> how, to, how to hide a flask about, about, uh, about, about, no, about, about timing and uh, you know, when to, when to jump in with a bit of humor, when not to um, it was, a, it was a fun show and it's, it's too bad. We were the only ones listening to it, but that's another topic well, for another day. <laughs> the, the, but the, 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 the thing, and of course, but those numbers now, are bigger than what 1050 has now. Our morning show had bigger numbers then than they do now. Yeah, well, that's a low bar, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the lowest of bars. Yeah. That's I can't <laughs> see where the bar is. You can't limbo under that bar, <laughs> let me tell you. And and the other station, not that much ahead of it either. They're, yeah. they're heading in the same direction. It's sort of uh, sad. But uh, the one thing that, uh, that, as I said, if you had missed it beforehand, just the name of your podcast for people who wanted to uh, uh, it, experience really a, a sensational take on a perspective of the Beatles. Yes, I got some great, uh, speaking of the last time I was on with you, some great feedback of people saying, oh, I didn't know that he was a music guy and as such a Beatles nerd. And uh, so hopefully I gained some new listeners. It's called The Walrus Was Paul. Uh, which is a, a you know a play on a Beatle lyric for those of you who are Beatle fans. For those of you who aren't, that's what it is. You can find the podcast, The Walrus Was Paul, at any podcast platform. I have a lot of listeners on uh, the Apple platform. I have a lot on Spotify, uh, Google Casts, all of them. You can find it, and it's a very simple concept. Uh, I talk to some big names from the Canadian music industry, and they go through their favorite Beatles or Beatles solo album track by track. And we've had Jim Cuddy and Colin Cripps from Blue rodeo on a couple of times Stephen page ex of the bare naked ladies has been on dave bedini has been on a couple of times uh we've had some great guests and and more great uh, in a couple of weeks going to have on uh barry keen who is the longtime drummer for gordon lightfoot uh, he's been on lightfoot's touring band and studio band for like 40 years uh he's going to be a great guest so it's, it's it's a lot of fun talking talking music i think i said to you last time mike I've, i still love sports but i was kind of sports out uh and every guy fired sportscaster and they're piling up like cordwood these days uh you know hey, i'm gonna do a, a sports podcast and i thought <laughs> you know what i'm gonna do something i love that voice <laughs> and I, I got that from you uh and i just thought you know i'm gonna do something a little different so i veered off in this direction not to say that i won't come back to sports at some point but right now i'm um, about this podcast well it's uh, sensational and uh, the numbers reflect that so uh, we're thrilled uh, that uh, we can have you on and and uh because i and i do want to ask a question because i know we're out of time we got out of traffic the movie yesterday that came out a couple of years ago and uh, i want to get your take on that because i loved it. i thought the premise look you got to buy into sometimes a surreal premise like a twilight zone you know if you hated the twilight zone then never see this movie because you'd, you'd hate it but if you can buy into that I just thought the take on it was actually brilliant. And I thought the, uh, the guy who, the, the, the Indian lead in that movie was a phenomenal, it was just a phenomenal uh, idea. But again, if you don't buy into the premise from the very beginning, uh, then that movie would have been, you're in the, you're in the wrong theater. Yeah, now, you I wanted to, yeah. No, I thought it was great. Uh, really well done. Uh, and I, I don't want to, you know, spoiler alert, I don't want to give give the movie away. But th there was a point where I thought it would have been just the perfect ending to it. And then it and it, it was so nice. And it was so outstanding what they did. Uh, and then for the last, you know, the denouement, I guess, if you want to. Right. The, the, yeah, it, it kind of went off the, uh, you know, went off. It, and it turned into sort of a Hollywood, hey, you know, this and that, and, you know, and it, it kind of wraps up with a bit of a moral and, and they lost me a bit there. But but the first two thirds of it or first three quarters of it, I'm, I'm with you. It was a really sweet movie. Really nice. We're going to continue with uh, Paul Romanuk uh, in uh, the virtual studio. But first at 735, we do traffic on the fives. And here's Brendan.
No radio? No problem. Stream us live on Saga960AM.ca. You're listening to Rob Mike Richards on News Talk Saga 960. Attention minor hockey teams. The Mississauga Steelheads want to give you the experience of a lifetime. Raise money for your team. Skate on the ice as the Steelheads play in front of thousands of fans. Or have Steelheads players at your practice. To get your team involved, head to MississaugaSteelheads.com or give us a call at area code 905-502-7788. Welcome to Sports Interaction, Canada's sports book. Dedicated to giving competitive odds on the teams and sports that matter to Canadians. Hockey, football, basketball, golf majors, whatever your sport, SIA has you covered. Get more ways to play on every sport. Online at Sports Interaction, including the best live in play. Canada plays at SIA. Get in the game at Sports Interaction, Canada's sports book. Brought to you by Mohawk Online in Canada. Players must be 19 years or older. Play responsibly. Imagine having over 100 TV multi language channels at your fingertips. Imagine having over 100 multi language radio stations at your fingertips. Now, imagine an app that lets you watch or listen to all of this amazing entertainment whenever or wherever you want. Now, imagine it's all free. eBaba is the reality in mobile entertainment. Download eBaba for iOS or Android. Turn imagination into reality at eBaba. If you thought Mark Petroni was a pain in the ass in the mornings, Wait until you hear him in the afternoons. That's right. Mark Petrone and all his freedom-loving awesomeness is now on Afternoons on News Talk Saga 960. Everything you've always loved and hated about Mark will be all there every weekday, 1 to 3 p.m. Enjoy your new afternoon delight. The Mark Petrone Show, weekdays, 1 to 3 p.m. Only on News Talk Saga 960. Afternoon delight. Raw Mike Richards, weekdays on News Talk Saga 960. And now, from the Bell Lifestyle Studio, here's Mike. 740, News Talk Saga 960. Raw Mike Richards in studio with our good friend Paul Romanuk. And generally, when I see an international tournament, uh, there's going to be an announcement, obviously, of Team Canada. Uh, something that all Canadians sort of at that moment, at that moment, obsess over. Uh, and it really doesn't matter what the tournament is. Canadians then only see gold and they just, they're just transfixed. It's their, their eyes are just glued to the television for that, for that period of time. Now, after that international hockey is a zero. We have no <laughs> recollection of anything that goes on any of the countries, any of the tournaments. It's only in that moment. It's just who we are. I mean, recognize who we are. And so I don't know how many international hockey games, uh, your voice, I think, is still in the Hockey Hall of Fame. The It Is Over call, I believe, is still in there. And, of course, being a bunch of dicks as we were, we had an event in uh, when we were the Team 1050 in the Hockey Hall of Fame where you can record uh, a famous hockey moment and play it back. So, of course, we go in the guy who's actually in the Hall of Fame, that being Paul Romanek's voice. And sitting beside him, and then doing the stupidest. And he thought it would do another person. And he thought to another person. Oh, it lo- oh, 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 oh! It's the penalty shot. Oh, it's the goal in the net. You know, just stupid ass people going. What is in front of the guy, whose actual voice we actually hear in the hall? But that, I mean, look, international hockey has been a big part of your life. And uh, you know, the Spengler Cup. Someone talked about it on Twitter the other day. Just you, because that tournament is actually pretty special, and is something that I always wanted to go to. I always thought one Christmas to spend, to be in, in, in Davos would have been uh, like a dream come true. That would have been amazing. It's, it is, uh, I've, I've told many people this, if, if you're a, a hockey fan uh, and you can afford it, <laughs> because Switzerland's not a cheap place, uh, you know, home of the uh, $14 <laughs> two ounce <laughs> glass of wine. Uh, but the, uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's of, of, all of the events that I did on a recurring basis. So, you know, world junior hockey championship, world championship, Spengler cup, Spengler would be my favorite for sure. Uh, just because 
you're it's like living on a postcard for uh, for two weeks or 10 days however long the tournament is you're in this beautiful swiss ski village there are, there is a mountain range on either side of you and the rink is the most beautiful hockey rink i've ever been in i know there are some you know beautiful old rinks in canada as well with the big sort of uh, open uh, cathedral type ceiling open wood uh but this is you know, this is a biggish building and it, it looks like a cathedral inside. There's glass at both ends. It's gorgeous. And the hockey is really, really good. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a highly competitive level. It's better hockey than from a strict hockey point of view. And I know this is sacrilegious to some Canadians. It's way better hockey than the world junior. It's not even close because these are, these are men who are professionals, uh, not 18, 19 year olds who are trying to be professionals, uh, you know, it's it, and it, it, it they're two different things. But uh, I mean, the Spengler Cup ch- team that represents Canada would mop the ice with Canada's national junior team. It wouldn't even be wouldn't even be close. So the hockey is better, and it's and the just the event and the atmosphere is fantastic. So if you can ever go, you know, you go there. Uh, here's how your day goes, Mike. You get up out of bed, have a nice breakfast, maybe go for a little ski or a walk around the uh, the winter paradise you're in. You go to the early game. At uh, I think it's three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, you you leave the early game. You go out, drinks, dinner. Uh, you come back for the late game that is at eight o'clock that night. You go out after the late game, drink, drink, drink. You know, uh, dinner, 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 party, party, schmooze, schmooze. You sleep in the next morning, get up, lather, rinse, repeat. You do that for ten days. Like it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it is. It is great. Uh, now, the World Juniors is is a special tournament, uh, obviously, and and to Canada. Like even if you talk to Americans who who their program since they you know started going down that path of hockey USA uh, since uh, I guess probably Miracle on Ice I guess if you want to draw a line in the sand for hockey in that in that country and they've done a spectacular job of of American hockey uh, for for me growing up I never thought of the U.S. and hockey it just wasn't in my in, in my mind my the thinking of me and certainly in high school like your 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 biggest rival was Russia. Yeah. I mean, it was us and the Russians that has changed over really the, 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 the decades where our biggest rival, even on the women's side, which I wouldn't have thought of back then either has become you. And it's just because us USA hockey has done a really incredible job. But even when I talk to my American friends, they're obviously aware of the world juniors, but it's not a coast to coast obsession where our Christmas holidays have been melded in with the world junior tournament they're almost one in the same people alter how they eat when they celebrate when nana comes over and nana better not be standing in front of the television when we're playing you know german germany or latvia or switzerland it has become part of culturally of our christmas break yeah and i mean i was really lucky to be a part of that and it was it was just because you know everything is timing uh as as you know you know when you you look back in hindsight and there never been a situation uh, you know because there hadn't been a sports network the only people who covered the world junior and they covered it just a tiny bit was cbc because cbc did all the sports back then then you had this new relatively new tv network that was all sports that was a first for canada and that was tsn and that's where i was working at the time and then we started doing uh and it was my idea uh to do a junior hockey game of the week because i'd cut my teeth as a play-by-play guy in the 80s doing uh, toronto marley's and oshawa generals games in the radio so like you know it's, it's a great product we should get it on so we we started in i want to say 1990 to do it was called chl sunday night and it was a sunday night chl game from the the q the o or or the dub one of the three canadian leagues and the canadian hockey league which is the umbrella group for all three was so happy about this and thought it was so great that Dave Branch, who was a big ally of, of mine, uh, he, he was the head of, uh, of the CHL. He's not anymore. Dave Branch went in and said, look, um, we should get the World Juniors on TSN. These guys will do a better job for us. And that was the genesis of the deal and the World Juniors going to TSN. The second thing that I think happened, Mike, when you talk about timing is, okay, so now you had a network. We were going to do all the World Junior games. No one had done that before. Uh, However, the big thing, Canada helped out because they won. 
they, they went on at the time an unprecedented run of five consecutive gold medals at the World Juniors. They had never done that before. Had they gone on and had their usual showing, you know, gold one year, fourth the next, maybe a third, maybe lose in the final, maybe win it again. I don't think it would have taken off the way it did, but a tradition and a habit developed of, hey, Merry Christmas, and we're going to sit around and watch Canada kick the crap out of uh, Norway on Boxing Day. Hey, score <laughs> after one period, six nothing. Canada should be a good second back after this, right? Uh, but people and you know Canadian hockey fans are front runners, like all sports fans, and they love to watch their team win. And the team won, and it took on a life of its own, uh, and it re and it still continues, right? You had told me, and, and, and again, you see, my, I have a weird memory that I remember literally everything. My memory is freakishly good, except for recent memory, like where keys and wallets and stuff. And I'm still <laughs> right, right I'm, just, with you. <laughs> I'm just brutal. But I remember almost, you had a conversation with me, uh, I think, upon them blowing uh, or close to it when they blew up uh, a 1050. And you had said to me, he said, you're going to move on. He goes, I know you're going to move on and you're, you're, go you're going to be the morning man. He goes, that's what's going to happen for you because you don't need us. That's what you said. You don't need us. Derringer said the same thing to me to a degree. He goes, you don't, you don't need us. You're, you're a walking show. Go somewhere and, and do your show. But the one thing that you said to me that was different than anybody else, you said, and when you interview hockey players, interview the junior guys, if you, inter if you can get them when they're that age, you'll get them for their whole career because they'll remember those conversations early. It yes. probably was one of the more important things that you lessons that I've learned that I kept as you know, in my sort of 10 commandments, that's, that's in the top three. And of course, it's exactly what has happened in my career. And the first guy who falls into that category, who I could literally call right now is Jonathan Taves. I did a fake Jim Rome bit in Calgary where I'm Jim Rome, but I'm doing him in the, in this style of voice, not, not cracking, but you know, just, you know, uh, uh, kind of, I've, when he was that, he was that monster at that world junior game where he scores like all the goals, goes to the shootout, scores all the goals. Yeah. And he was so excited that when they put the mic on him, he drops an F bomb. <laughs> it's as clear as day. It was, there was no delay and he drops an F bomb, this guy. So I do this bit where he starts talking about everything, including his aunt's chocolate cake and what an effing good, good chocolate cake it is. And I effing love going there. And she's the F. And so, so it's filled. This is a bit that he goes back when he goes back to North Dakota, <laughs> fighting Sue at the time as they were called and plays it in the dressing room. The coaches play the whole thing. They're on the ground laughing because he's still, he's not a pro yet. That has followed him everywhere. If he's in town and we're in a studio, he will come into the studio because of those things that you have told me, well, you know, just make sure you, because there's so much clowning around that I've always done. As you said, you go, you, you can't appear as a clown. You can't, they won't, if you're, if you're that guy, they won't talk to you. You'll, you'll be off the list. If they don't know you, that's a hard thing for them to get their heads around as hockey players. You've been around it your whole life. You know how they think. And so that, just so you know, has been a huge part of my repertoire is talking to young guys, getting to, to, to also train them because that's what we have them every Tuesday. We have meet the steelheads and we have all these young guys and there will be two or three of them. James Hardy probably being one of them coming up this Tuesday. These guys go pro. So Owen Tippett, originally from uh, Peterborough, uh, ends up in Mississauga, now Florida Panther. If I want him on the show tomorrow, he'd be on because he's used to the, yeah, yeah, the stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's very important. Now, look, I, we're going to see this. Is, this is why we need to have you on a regular basis because we got four minutes left. And I, I keep saying, inter, so in the international scene, we announced the Olympics, which I can't believe uh, considering what's going on in this world. Uh, the, the corporate, you know, them just lining their pockets every, you know, four years or whatever uh, with, with, uh, with monies from these international events. It's always, to a degree, been so political, always has been. But this seems even weirder. And China, who is, you know, behind almost every human atrocity uh, any, when it comes to uh, pollution or the environment, like just the worst in the world. And yet they have Olympics in a year where COVID has still dominated the planet. I find the whole thing uh, it's a little sickening, so I'm not waiting for uh, Michel Dundelessois to win the flaming aerial event uh, where fireworks come out of her ski poles. I'm sorry, not into it. <laughs> um, I, I agree with you. On, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, there's so many conversations to be had, and I know we only have a few minutes, but uh, from the get-go, you know, uh, shame in the IOC for 
awarding it to China uh, and going back a couple of Winter Olympics, awarding the Winter Olympics to Sochi. Like, why are we awarding Olympic Games? Why are we awarding the privilege, the privilege of hosting the Olympic Games to totalitarian dictatorships? Um, uh, who don't share our our values, uh, and I, I don't know why that is. Uh, money uh, is why it is, but uh, you know. And again, that that doesn't reflect on the athletes. But as a Canadian, I'm particularly outraged that we're going from the standpoint of they held two of our citizens hostage for over a thousand days. Did, did that escape anybody's attention? They held two of our citizens hostage for over a thousand days. Uh, and again, it's, it's unfair in some ways to, to look to the athletes to bear that burden, but I know if I'm an athlete, um, that's going to stick in my craw going to going there. I mean, m my suggestion was, okay, let the athletes, let's not deprive them of the chance of competing, let them go, let them compete. This is the biggest deal in the, in their career for many of them. And it's a very small window in which they have to compete. Uh, but just boycott the opening and closing ceremonies, because that's going to be the propaganda show. That's, that's going to be, look how great China is. Don't give them that pleasure. Say we're going to the games. We're not going to take part in your, in your propaganda gong show, the opening and closing ceremonies. I don't think that's a big thing to ask of the athletes. And, and you're right. It's it's you know, these people have trained for so long, some of them since almost birth. I mean, they, 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 this is a lifelong um, goal, but it, it is their life. They they've not it's not like they're eating cheeseburgers uh, when they're 13, 14 and go, you know what? I really want to run the try. I really want to run the 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 the, the, the 15,000 or 10,000 meters. like it, whatever it is they've done. They have dedicated personally their entire life. So to take that away is is incredibly it's cruel. And, yeah, yeah. but, but, you know, being used for, as you said, propaganda where, and those, those opening and closing ceremonies, the only ones I ever, the only ones I watched were the ones from London. The they were, they were, were good. They the, were the, good. The, those ones I watched and, uh, isn't it where they did the fake, the, uh, the, the queen jumping out of a plane a parachute <laughs> or whatever the parody was. I'm like, and then you had, uh, Sir Paul McCartney ending it. And, uh, that, you got my attention. Like I'm, I'm watching that, but everything else with the swans and the here come children dressed up like pigeons. I'm like, what Oh, the, what is, and then in Canada, of course, then come Mounties and, and you know, all the stuff that, that, that we get stereotyped in movies on there, the snow's coming down and then you got someone flying around and I'm like uh, on wires, like they're Peter Pan or something, but it's really, it's a, it's a flying beaver. Oh, you know, I, oh, isn't that lovely? I'm like, get it off, you know. But again, it's it's uh, okay. And see, we're out of time. We we need to do this on a regular ba basis. Uh, how about every day? Because I got to be honest, this is this is the easiest hour I've had uh, in, in 30 years. Uh, look, we'll we'll get into more stuff next time. If you're around and this is available, I'm just saying the audience would love it, and I certainly would love it. Yep. No, always happy to come on. And we still haven't told the cigar and the drink stories. So. <laughs> no, yeah, it's the big finish. That's we'll, the, uh, we'll that's get a, to that one. Yeah. Day. Yeah. We'll get to that one. Buddy. Thanks so much for this hour. It just flew by. Uh, great to see you. And I can't thank you enough for this. Always fun. My pleasure. And anytime. Take care. That is Paul Romanek joining us here this morning. That was a very quick hour as it always is his podcast, by the way, uh, the walrus was Paul hugely popular look for it on spotify anywhere where you get it and uh, you'll be pleased that you did what an awesome hour